welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about cytoskeleton cytoskeleton so what exactly is this cytoskeleton see in our body we are having skeleton right which gives the uh, shape to our body the same way cell also have its own shape right to maintain the shape and structure it also have its own skeleton so that's what is called as a cytoskeleton so the cytoskeleton function is now you already know it it gives shape to the cell it gives shape to the cell now what are the different types of cytoskeleton okay different uh, structures which are present in the cells which are acting like a cytoskeleton what are they cytoskeleton includes micro tubules so micro tubules are a part of cytoskeleton microfilaments and intermediate filaments okay microtubules microfilaments and intermediate filaments see out of all these three one is not going to grow and other two are going to grow continuously which means with the cell ages okay as the cell is getting aged as the cell is growing the cytoskeleton also grows which means it is dynamic in nature it's not static so two of the cytoskeletal structures are going to grow along with the cell but the other one is not going to grow so who is going to grow microtubules they are dynamic microfilaments are also dynamic but intermediate filaments they are static okay they are static now out of all these three who is more abundant in the cell okay most abundant cytoskeletal structure is intermediate filament they are most abundant okay but who is more stronger see we have divided the cytoskeleton into microtubules microfilaments intermediate filaments mainly based on their size see microtubules are having a bigger diameter they are biggest and they are the most strongest so they are the strongest microtubules are biggest and strongest now let's begin with the microtubules important points about the microtubules sir microtubules they are made up of what okay microtubules whatever were there so this microtubule structure for example imagine this is the microtubule okay sir this microtubule it's made up of what it's made up of tubulins okay so there are different types of tubulins alpha tubulin beta tubulin gamma tubulin okay simply microtubules they are made up of tubulin protein called as a tubulin okay now one more point is that this uh, microtubules they are having two terminals one positive terminal and one negative terminal okay so positive terminal will be there and negative terminal will be there so what exactly is this positive terminal represents sir what exactly is that positive terminal see i have already said you these are dynamic filaments dynamic filaments in the sense they are kept on growing so imagine this is a microtubule okay which, which is present in the cell it is giving the stru uh, structural integrity to the cell okay now one end is considered as a positive which means this end kept on grows by the adding of the tubulin molecules now this end is kept on growing so that end which grows is called as positive terminal okay done sir now next what else i want you to know regarding the microtubules is see this microtubules they are not only giving the shape to the cell they are also involved in the cellular transport okay intracellular transport for example imagine here is one cell inside this cell there is this microtubule for example say there is this microtubule positive and negative and microtubules microtubules are like this okay microtubules these are all the microtubules like this they are like a framework okay but i used to remember microtubules just like a highway okay microtubules are just like a bridge on bridge who is going to move vehicles are going to move there is transport going on on the bridges so i used to remember this microtubules as a bridges on which a molecular motors okay there are molecular motors moving okay molecular motors moving so what are the examples of the molecular motors sir imagine this is a microtubule okay this is a microtubule now on the microtubule molecular motors are moving and they help in the transport of the substances within the cell 
So what are the examples of this molecular motors? Molecular motors include dynein, okay, dynein and kinesin. So the dynein and kinesin molecules, they are the molecular motors. I used to remember DR, we are the doctors, right? So I used to remember something like DR. So DR stands for what? So dynein helps in retrograde. Okay, dynein helps in, see dynein helps in retrograde cargo. Okay, retrograde cargo or retrograde transport. Kinesin helps in anterograde. Okay, anterograde cargo. Now you will get it out. Sir, what exactly is this retrograde cargo and what exactly is anterograde cargo or anterograde transport is? See, if imagine this is a microtubule. Here I am showing the microtubule in a single line. This is a microtubule. It's having positive terminal and negative terminal. If a substance is being transported from positive towards the negative side. Okay, so that's the dynein. See, this is the dynein. This is the molecular motor dynein. This is going to carry the substances in the vesicle. Here is the vesicle. Okay, these are the vesicle which is having a lot of substances. Now it is moving towards the negative side. If a molecular motor is moving towards the negative side, then it is called as a retrograde cargo. Or if a molecular motor, it actually walks, it actually walks like this by the usage of GTP. If it moves towards the positive terminal, then it is called as an anterograde cargo. So there is something called as a retrograde cargo and anterograde cargo on the microtubules with the help of dynein and kinesin. These are the molecular motors. So okay, cargo is being transported. Now what I want you to know for your exam is, sir, there are certain viruses like rabies, polio, tetanus. So rabies virus, polio virus and tetanus virus. Okay, rabies virus polio virus and tetanus toxin, not virus, tetanus toxin. See, these substances, once they enter into the body, for example, say how you will get the rabies, okay? From the rabbit dog, there is a rabbit dog and it's going to come and bite. Now, that rabies virus is going to first come into, into this area. But rabies will go and affect your central nervous system. It will go into the hippocampus. How, from here, how that rabies virus is being transported via the blood? No. Rabies first enters into the neurons. Now, the neurons, via the neurons, via the retrograde cargo, it goes into the central nervous system. Via the retrograde cargo, the rabies virus enters into the central nervous system. In the same way, polio virus and tetanus, toxin also enters, gets access into the central nervous system via the retrograde cargo. Okay? Retrograde cargo. And who is helping in the retrograde cargo? Always remember, doctor. So, dynein helps in retrograde cargo. Kinesin helps in anterograde cargo. Now, not only that, what else I want you to know is, sir, these microtubules. What is, the, what is the other function of the microtubules? See, I, let me show you one image so that you will have a better understanding. See what, what I am drawing here. See, these are the chromosomes which are lying on the equatorial plate, something like this. Now, what exactly I am showing you? See, right now, the cell division is happening. During the cell division, okay, here are the centrioles, these are the microtubules, right? With the help of microtubules, the dotted lines, whatever I am drawing from the centrioles, whatever the microtubules, see the microtubules are going to form. See, these microtubules are the ones which helps in separation of the chromosome into two poles while the cell is getting divided. Now, you have to separate the chromosomes after the chromosomes after the DNA replication. Now, you have to break these chromosomes and you have to separate them. For that process, again, microtubules, microtubules are the one which helps in the separation, okay? So, if you can inhibit this microtubule in, uh, formation, if you inhibit the microtubule formation, cell division is going to occur, no cellular division. So, in which conditions you don't want the cell division to occur? In which conditions you don't want cell division? It's in the cancers. In the cancers, you don't want the cell division to occur, right? So, in treating in the treatment of cancers or the anti-cancer drugs whatever we are going to use it they can inhibit microtubule formation so what are they micro tubule inhibitors can be used as anti-cancer drugs so what exactly are they vincristin vincristin vinblastin and colgesin. Okay, this, all these are anti-cancer drugs are microtubule inhibitors. These are microtubule inhibitors which can act as anti-cancer drugs 
and colchicin they can be also used in the treatment of acute gout can be used in the treatment of acute gout so these are some important points which i want you to know regarding microtubules microfilaments not much important points are there microfilaments the examples of the microfilaments are actin and myosin see this actin and myosin they are not only present in the skeletal muscles you know the actin and myosin help that the sliding filament theory helps in the muscle contraction you know that stuff see this is a different actin and myosin okay these are the cytoskeletal actin and myosin which is giving the integrity to the cell structure these are different things okay so actin and myosin they are examples of microfilaments and what are the important points about the intermediate filaments see intermediate filaments are going to be specific okay specific to the cell which means for example if i am talking about keratin keratin is an example of intermediate filament it will be present only in particular type of cells keratin is present in a particular type of cell glial fibrillary acidic protein is an intermediate filament it's present in a particular type of cell so they are specific but microfilaments actin and myosin they are present in all the cells microtubules are present in all the cells but intermediate filaments are specific let me write here inter intermediate filaments okay intermediate filaments they are specific now the first intermediate filament which i want you to know for your exam is keratin keratin sir so keratin it is present in which cells specifically it is only only present in epithelial cells it is present in epithelial cells now how this is going to be helpful for us see now i am giving you a cancer okay there is a, some cancer mass and i want you to know whether this cancer is coming from which cell it is deriving from which cell see if it's a cancer which is arising from the epithelial cell we are going to call them as carcinomas right carcinomas are the cancers which are arising from the epithelial cells so carcinomas definitely going to have which filament keratin filaments inside them so keratin is a tumor marker of it's a tumor marker of squamous cell carcinomas okay so squamous cell carcinomas that tumor marker is going to be keratin so you will be seeing keratin pearls in the cells inside the cancerous cells okay something like that next the next type of intermediate filament is called as desmin so desmin it's a tumor marker of so desmin first of all i want you to know desmin is present in which cells it is only only present skeletal muscles skeletal muscles so if you are having a cancer which is arising from the skeletal muscles then definitely those cells are going to be positive for the desmin so it's a tumor marker of skeletal muscle cancer is called as rhabdomyosarcomas okay so rhabdo myo sarcomas so for rhabdomyosarcomas the tumor marker is desmin next intermediate filament is called as g fab g fab so what exactly is g fab stands for glial fibrillary acidic protein okay glial fibrillary acidic protein so glial fibrillary acidic protein it's a a uh, intermediate filament which is present in the astrocytes the glial cells okay so astrocytes which are going to form the blood brain barrier okay blood brain barrier now if the patient is having some tumor of astrocytes like pilocytic astrocytoma or glioblastoma multiforme these are the tumors of astrocytes so in which cells or in which cancers the glial fibrillary acidic protein is going to be present our glial fibrillary acidic protein is a tumor marker of pilocytic astrocytoma so which is usually seen in the children the mural tuber the mural nodule which is present in the cerebellum okay that's a pilocytic astrocytoma which is seen in the children it's a astrocytoma of the children there is one more astrocytoma that's a grade 4 astrocytoma more cancerous deadly thing that is called as glioblastoma multiforme okay glioblastoma multiforme it's going to be a cancer of the astrocytes a grade 4 tumor okay 
uh, which is also called as a butterfly glioma that's also a cancer of astrocytes okay next intermediate filament is a vimentin vimentin it is present in fibroblast intermediate filament present in fibroblasts okay are present in connective tissue cells connective tissue cells so it's a tumor marker of cancers of connective tissue in origin okay connective tissue in origin so those cancers which are arising from the connective tissue those cells vimentin is going to be present so at the end of the day what i want you to know is sir intermediate filaments which are more abundant in number these intermediate filaments there are different types of intermediate filaments here i have discussed the most important ones like keratin desmin gfap and vimentin they are specific to different types of cells and examples of uh, microfilaments are actin and myosin these are not the actin and myosin which are going to cause the muscle contraction they are present in all the cells which are giving the integrity structural integrity to the cell and microtubules are the strongest and they are dynamic and microtubules they are not only giving the shape and structure to the cell but they are also involved in the process of cell division and also involved in the process of cellular transport within the cell okay via the anterograde and retrograde cargo so with this we have completed the topic of cytoskeleton hope the video is helpful thank you